Good morning, my principals of biomedical science students. So we are here in Block 1A as principal of biomedical science Google Classroom page. Now, as always, I'm using Block 1A, but you just adapt to whatever block you are in. And here's what we did today in class. So click from stream over to classwork and scroll down until you reach the date. Today is Tuesday, 10-6. And if you're watching this on a B day, yours would be Thursday, 10-8. But open the blood spatter analysis lab. So you remember at the scene of Anna Garcia's death, there was some blood spatter found. And if you did the 1.1.4 all the way through, then you know that it fell at a 90 degree angle. So the question now is not how the blood got there. It fell at a 90 degree angle. The question becomes from what height did the blood fall? So the question you're going to type in is from what height did the blood at Anna Garcia's scene of, of death? Oh, that's the question we need to answer. So our hypothesis then becomes how does the height blood fall, how does that affect the size of the droplet? So your hypothesis is going to be the same as mine except for in one place. So if blood falls from a higher I'm going to put height, then the droplets will be, here's where you, you might change yours, bigger than, you might think smaller than, and that's fine. Put smaller than if that's what you think. So the droplets will be bigger than if they fell from closer to the ground. So that's our hypothesis. That's what we would be testing if we were in class together. So independent variable. What is the thing that you would control if you were running this lab experiment? Right, the height the blood droplets fall from. In the dependent variable then, what do you measure? Yes, the size of the droplets. All right, so materials are actually given to you and I'm gonna copy and paste them from right here. This is on my PLTW, you can copy and paste from there or you can just type them in. So here we go, copy and paste, and then I'm gonna make it match the rest of the font because I have a little OCD that way. So the materials you would have working in class would be a transfer pipette, which is just, here we go, a little plastic pipette that you would suck the blood up in and then drop it. A ring stand and clamp. I don't think anybody who's ever run this lab, lab has used that, but it's available to you. A ruler and measuring tape and meter sticks. Simulated blood, it being so close to Halloween, simulated blood is everywhere. It's very convenient. White paper and paper towels. So that's your list of materials. You can copy this down exactly as it is here. Experimental procedure. This is where you guys get to come in. So I'm gonna hit enter. And experimental procedures are always numbered lists. So up here in the upper right side, you see numbered list, hit that. Number one's always gonna be the same. Um, gather materials and put on PPE. 
I guess one thing to be grateful to for coronavirus is that I now don't have to define what PPE is. You all know. Your job to finish this is to create at least five steps. So I did number one for you. Number two, remember we're testing the height versus the size. So step number two could be um, take a small amount of blood in the pipette and drop it from a height of 20 centimeters. Step number three could be measure the diameter of the droplet. Step number four could be something like repeat steps two and three from heights of 40, 60, 80, 100, up to 200 centimeters. Step number five could be record your data and clean up. But it is your job to type that into experimental procedure. Now you have your data here gathered for you, unfortunately, and you have the blood from the crime scene. Now, it looks like you have to put something here, but it just, it's an unfortunate splitting of the bolded text from the actual data. So you don't have to put anything for blood from the crime scene. It's actually given to you right here. So here's the blood found at Ana Garcia's scene. Your job is to type out your conclusion from the height this blood must have fallen. So you have 16 millimeters, 15, 14, and 13. Compare the blood here to your data table here. And you write your conclusion. The blood from the crime scene fell from heights of, and since there's more than one diameter, there's more than one height. So heights of, I don't know, 200 centimeters, 500 centimeters, and 1,200 centimeters. This conclusion is reached by comparing the size of the droplets to the data collected. So you type out your conclusion, two or three sentences, and you submit that, you turn it in, okay? The second thing I want you to do for today and I'm doing this in the order, the priority I want you to do it. If you go back to classwork students and you go to yesterday's date, I'm looking at 1.1.4 blood evidence, okay? If you did not finish this up, I want you to finish this up, okay? So here's what it looks like. And remember to finish this up Go to my PLTW, log in with your username and password. Click courses. So you're watching me click courses. You will click principles of biomedical science. You see the two young ladies examining the skulls. Skull singular. Use the left side scroll bar now and go to Lesson 1.1, Investigating the Scene, and click on that. And then scroll down to 1.1.4, Blood Evidence. And we're not quite done yet. You need, you need to click on the DL, Activity 1.1.4, Blood Evidence. And this is the page you use to complete the 1.1.4 blood evidence lab journal entry. So again, the page looks like this. So the first thing you do today, get this lab finished. Remember, the only thing you're really finishing is the procedure and the conclusion. Submit that. Job number two, get the lab journal from yesterday done activity 1.1.4 blood evidence. Job number three, and the reason this is number three is because you're not turning this in yet. Go to classwork again and look for the topic called career journals. And you'll open this up and you're doing two career journals today. So you wait for this to open up. Remember the 
second slide is a list of all the career journals we get to do. The third slide, slide number three, is the general instructions for how to do them. So if you forget what you're supposed to do for the bullet points, come back to slide number three. Number four is the first career journal, which you should have done already, but if not, do that. For the additional questions, remember I said you don't have to do that for this particular career journal, 1.1.1. The next one you're going to do is 1.1.3, the Digital Forensics Investigator. Okay, you do have to do the additional questions for that. And the next one I want you to do is the blood spatter analyst. And then you can do the additional questions here too. So do those three career journals. You should have 1.1.1 done already, but if you don't, do that. Do digital forensics investigator and do blood spatter analyst. Do not turn this in yet. That's why this is priority number three. Just get them done so that you're you're keeping up and you don't have to catch up when I do say to turn this in. Okay. So to recap, first, finish up the lab, the blood spatter and analysis lab. You're writing out the experimental procedure and the conclusion. The rest we've done together. Number two, Activity 1.1.4, Blood Evidence. If you did not finish that, finish that up using this page on my PLTW. And then number three, Career Journals on slides four, five, and six. All right.